welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Uh, we have Brian Gallagher in the studio today, as well as Jonathan and Steve, as always. Thanks very much for coming on. Yeah, no bother. No bother. Uh, we're here to talk about Ireland versus Wales. We're going. Oh, we're going to the playoffs. I was mm, almost about to say we're going to the playoffs. No, no, we're not quite going to the rush yet. George didn't do it. Not quite yet. We get there. <laughs> um, so I suppose we we'll to kick things off by talking about the lineup. Uh, a lot of people were confused uh, that there was no Wales in the lineup, even though he played seventy-five minutes against Moldova. Yeah. So it was a bit, it was a bit bizarre because you're thinking that O'Neill's trying to give him minutes so he'll actually be in the team, and then takes him off obviously the last fifteen minutes. So you're thinking that he's going to be putting him in for the Welsh game, but in fairness to O'Neill, he stuck to his game plan, mm -hmm. and you know maybe and also Shane Long obviously being out. Yeah. Do you, do you think that maybe was a blessing in disguise? Um. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think Hill hand starting was. I don't think ever realistically going to happen against Wilds because he was always going to try and go with three in the middle of the park and three actual central midfielders. And despite what some people say, Hillahan isn't a central midfielder. He's a number 10. He likes to play in behind the striker. And that's that's not what we were going to need when we weren't going to have much of the ball. You need Hendrick there with his energy, chasing everything down like he did. You need Arthur sitting there, give you a little bit of creativity and buzz around. And need Moeller sitting there deep as well. Um, as far as long... One goal in 42 games for club and country. Of course, it's a blessing in disguise because he probably would have played him ahead of Murphy and yeah. that would have been a massive mistake because Murphy's just such a nuisance up there when we are sitting so deep. Obviously, Long gives you that little bit in behind, but Murphy wins balls in the air. He's nearly better at winning free kicks than Long. It's. It was very. I think he got, as much as I criticise O'Neill time and again, he got his team selection dead on on Monday night. That's what yeah no he summed it up perfectly there like despite all the hysteria um, Wes is as much as I love him as a player he's kind of he's very much overrated by a lot of fans and he's kind of this little cult hero and probably undeservedly so really that was never ever a game for Wes um, he would have really struggled there like he saw, even the midfield 3 slash 5 whatever you want to look at it um, and they're all energetic players like they were those spells and all during the game where they look gas so you can only imagine what Wes was, was, would have been like yeah. Considering as well, he struggled big time uh, for fitness on, on Friday night as well. It was just just the wrong game. O'Neill got a bang on, probably got made his decision with the long Murphy debate. It, it was kind of a blessing in disguise at his head because yeah. that decision was taken. But obviously, out. We went through it in the previous yeah, game. like that that was taken out of him. He didn't have to do that toss up, and it was the perfect perfect uh, formation for the game. And you have to say to him, he's got he got it wrong a couple of times, but he's got a, he got a bang on uh, Monday night. Yeah, I reckon he the fact that he had McLean coming back in and he had uh, Brady coming back in that's creativity right there Yeah. quick sharp lads so he didn't really need Hulahan as well and I think he wanted you know a more robust player in there maybe yeah well Just we were to, all going to call him for yeah, the yeah. target man to be there because <laughs> yeah. we all know Shane Long like he's going to give you running into challenges and stuff like that but we did need someone who was going to make the ball stick up there mm -hmm. and like you, you know with Everton as well this year with Ashley Williams that he's lost what pace he had when he yeah, was at Swansea, yeah. mm -hmm. he looks a very, <laughs> very average. Yeah, he looks a very, very average player at Everton now. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the main problems in their back line. Yeah, and bringing Murphy in, who's a fella who's got so much nous and so much know how about him from mm -hmm. years and years of playing Australia in the Championship and all the different types of players and defenders you come up against there, even more so in the Premier League, that he was going to be able to drag Williams from one end of the pitch to one end of the pitch to the other. Make him follow him, make him try and win the headers in the air with him. Quite a show by the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it, yeah. The only thing I would say that I thought I was surprised that, well, I wasn't surprised that I was a bit disappointed with Clark being back in again. Sorry, Duffy. I just I just thought he looked like a rabbit stuck in the headlights. Yeah, I didn't think he had his best game. You know, as much as I, I, I actually rate him higher than Duffy normally, because Duffy's normally the one that's not concentrated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it turned out to be the other way around. Just just Duffy, so Duffy nervous, was on the ball. Maybe the got to him, you know, got to anybody, but. Uh, I thought that was just the one thing, maybe, in the team sheet that I wasn't too wasn't too happy about. But it's never really. Well, he hasn't, he hasn't let us not, down. He can yet. never get it totally. He, yeah. he, he hasn't let us down yet. Exactly. Kind of see where where uh, O'Neill was kind of sticking. with same thing with Randall. Mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, the start of the game, though, I thought first twenty minutes we were awful, and I thought mm. Wales dominated him with Joe Allen getting in between the lines, True. and no one was picking him up. Mm. Moyles' job was to be the one picking yeah. him up, but he wasn't. Eventually took him out, <laughs> which we're not going to complain about. No, too no, much yeah. just threw him at it, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> sandwich, well, the clean sandwich. <laughs> Listen, like I don't think, and um, there were a lot of Welsh fans complained about how oh, there was no cards for it or anything, and 
I don't think the challenge was actually that bad. It was actually Joe well, Allen. It's hit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Joe Allen hit the ground really mm-hmm. hard. That was the problem. It's and Miner does bag turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Miner didn't do anything. Wrong it's really realistically, there, yeah. it's three lads going for it's the ball. Yeah, yeah, McLean sure, gives yeah. him a little bit of a nudge, but you get that a million times yeah, again. Exactly, exactly. So it's nothing out of the ordinary, and it just happened to be that Miner was going committed for the ball. Allen was going committed for the ball. No, it wasn't and McLean a was trying to knock Allen off the ball, and that's. You know, yeah, he goes off, he gets the injury, and you don't want to see a player go off injured, but it was probably the makings of a win for us because he's so important to Wales, yeah, especially with like bailout. The annoying and frustrating thing about it was we just we couldn't string a pass together. For, for, for a good 20 to 25 minutes. It took us long. The nerves got to us, definitely. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely nerves, but what really was getting me was just the ease that they were able to play the ball through the lines on us. Yeah. We were, like, well, that it, was Joe Allen. He was just yeah, it wasn't, it was, it was, but they, they, were, they looked like superstars for 10 minutes. Now, I know, um, I was listening to, to Myler had been interviewed after the game, and it was quite interesting. And obviously, it was the team talk coming out, and it was like, yeah, look, we, we said we were going to start compact, we were going to sit deep, we were going to be cagey. And that kind of really showed for the first, because... I think I was scribbling down at the time. I think it was about 16 minutes before we got an attack. Yeah. yeah. And um, and for that stage, we were just rabbits. And mm. there's two things for me that kind of strike in, in my head that kind of change the momentum of the game. There's the, obviously the Allen injury, and then they're having to change, and they drop Ramsey back, and they look no longer look that attacking force. But if you notice at one stage, now I think I was listening to Kelvin Kimban pointed out as well, he, he said he noticed it at the stadium, was when, my, when Allen was down for a couple of minutes, you see Keane comes running out, and he's talking straight away to the, fo- the two full backs. And I watched it back again since. It's very noticeable if you if you get a chance to watch it back. The two full backs who had been pretty much staying wide mm. uh, and pretty much doing nothing, been totally out of the game. And um, as a result, our midfield were chasing shadows. They push forward, sat a little deeper into midfield, and then all of a sudden, midfield is a lot more compact. That space, yeah, in. that's that that, that space up and down isn't there anymore. And it's you know, we can talk about it again, but the modern day tactics like um, Pep has done a big time. You only have to watch the way City uh, they City played yeah, against Chelsea, well and they they, they just took them in. It's just that formation, just took it in. It's only a simple yeah. tactical change, but it, it made a, it made a lot of difference. And then we started to play a bit. Yeah, it's essentially when he talks to when any team talks their two fullbacks mm-hmm. in, it becomes more effective. When obviously Tom Lawrence is a right foot player mm-hmm. playing out on the left yes. for Wales, he wants to naturally come inside. Yeah. On the right, then they had Andy King playing out there, and then Johnny Williams when he came on. Yeah, he looks Both, like you. Yeah, he does a little. <laughs> <laughs> I have more hair though. Um, but he a was few out. On the, actually had said that. Yeah, <laughs> he was out on the right, and they're naturally central players, so they're not going to want to stay out wide. Yeah. They're not going to stay really wide. Ben Davis is never going to trouble you with pace. Chris Gunter is never going to trouble uh, you with no, pace. Ben Davis would trouble you with pace. He just didn't get the chance to. Ah, uh, he wouldn't. He's not that quick. Robbie Brady burnt him a few times for Burnley at yeah. Wembley earlier in the season. I was actually surprised. <laughs> a lot of people were moaning about Darren Murphy saying, oh, he's a big ox, I can't move. He's fairly sprightly for 34. Yeah, well, like, the second half, he, I saw him run to the corner. I didn't believe it was him. But, yeah, uh, was that, was that, maybe that was his adrenaline going was too. That, was that when he was running like a robot? And mad, so. <laughs> At the same time, he got the red card against Serbia. He got them the red card by getting in behind their defence yeah. and running. He's, he's, he's not the quick. quick he's not the quickest, but, like, but he, he just looks funny when he runs. Like, he's long, he's got very long stride. Right, you know? He's yeah. lagging over five yards. Yeah, well, like, look, um, I was just saying, like, then you could see the difference, obviously, as you said, when. Um, when Alan went off, and we did start to play the ball a bit better. We weren't great now in fans. No. I thought the first half we were off, and I had even tweeted at the time that we, we need to change. Mm. Uh, there was no changes made, though. And then, it was forced on them and then on us. Yeah, and, and then I thought, they, I thought O'Neill must, he must have said something at, at half time to, to really get them going. And, you know, we've been quite critical of O'Neill in the yeah. last few games, which the last me, four, yeah. games, four games. <laughs> um, you know, saying that he hasn't done this right and he hasn't done that right, but he did things his own way. I don't think a lot of fans would have would have um, went the way he went, mm. but I mean, he stuck it out, and you know his tactics prevailed. I suppose we'll talk about the goal because mm. Jeff Hendrick, Cracking basically, goal. you know, between Jeff Hendrick and James McLean, they basically like he chased showed the, the Irish spirit. He chased basically. the last pass up the line twice. I'm surprised, like gone, yeah. I'm surprised it, it stayed in. Like obviously the keeper throws it out. Was it Ben Davis lost the ball? No, Williams. Okay, that corner pitch seemed to have a lip on it, didn't it? He's keeping the ball in. Actually, well, actually, but whatever way, it, it, it stayed in yeah. somehow. Spins. Well, um, and then he takes it in. Now, I didn't think Hendrick had a good game at all like, before no, this. I, I actually thought Hendrick was very effective. He didn't have he didn't a lot. He didn't have a lot on the ball, but he did his job exceptionally well. He made it really difficult for Wales in that midfield area, especially in the deep part of the midfield area, to get a lot of time on the ball. He made them push to the second. 
he made them try and push the ball to the second level a little second quicker and try to play the ball long to Robson Canu, which is exactly what we wanted. Mm. We wanted them to try and play it long to Robson Canu because he's never going to beat Shane Duffy in the air. Who we will get to later yeah. on. But then, obviously, um, Jeff Hendrick, he whips that ball in and I thought it was very clever by Harry Arthur. Just a little, um, just dummy, little dummy like he made, uh, who was it, Chalabat? Chalabat, yeah. Just, uh, almost a shot yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, bam, right foot, James McLean. I don't think there was any doubt. I know he missed, I know he missed one, was it against um, Serb- Austria? That's Serbia, I think he missed. Yeah, it was he Austria. tried to murder it, yeah. And he, Which, I think it was Austria. Austria. Yeah, it was, it was Austria. Austria. And he, yeah. he, he skied it instead of just taking a touch. But I think he, I think he obviously learned from that and just composed himself. And he didn't, you know, he didn't take a touch. But he looked like his body was, you know, the technique was really good, and he just smashed the home. I think he's quite confident. <laughs> Four goals now for Ireland, and, and I think that's more than he has in. I know, but it, 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 games. It, it, it's all for West Brom. He's grabbing the crest. He's <laughs> that was the brilliant. Crowd, yeah. It's also what is all the green fucking. What is important with James, or what has been important with James playing four goals and qualifying is the winner against Wales, winner against Austria, winner against Moldova, three away wins. All of the massive goals for Ireland in the qualifying against campaign. Against teams that are seeded higher than us as well. Yeah, uh, but obviously apart from Moldova, but he got the other one against Moldova yeah, as well. Mm. Um, so that's his four goals, and they were all crucial goals in getting us qualifying. He's basically, through his goals, got us, what, 12 points? Or nine points? I think he steps up a level when he plays his country oh, definitely, in the yeah. Premier League. I think he's more belief in himself, or maybe Martin O'Neill is more belief in him than Tony Pulis, I don't know, but... I can see a big difference in him passion wise and just skill wise when he's on the park for us. Um, yeah, with Pulis he seems to um, to have really improved because obviously he went through that little spell where you know he was down with Wigan and you know he struggled obviously with Sunderland and stuff like that mm. and he wasn't doing well. He, he went, went down to New York to Red Bulls as well at that stage of his career as well. He was what? He was about to sign for the New York Red Bulls oh, at yes, that stage was, as well. Yeah. He was and about to go to the MLS. You, very see, you, you see, he went down to <coughs> done his trade, mm. then got a move to West Brom mm. and. It seems to really benefit him and Ireland because he's been our best player this campaign. Yeah, he's been brilliant. He's a very tenacious character as well. Yeah. Even all this yeah, loyalty and the poppy and all this sort of stuff, you can see it. I mean, his, blue, his veins are pumping when he walks onto the pitch for us. Yeah, really. the only thing is, I think sometimes he can get too wound up. Like if you see it, somewhere, oh, he's a uh, yellow Serbia. card walking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. see him at Serbia, Those like markers. he was, he yeah. was, he was crying out. Mm. Uh, to be, you know, I thought he was going to get a red card. To be the tackle, yeah, um, the tackle. He. He's his own worst enemy at times, but then when he when he does what he what he did, obviously with the goal and stuff like <laughs> there that. There's no saving that goal, it's a cracking hit. Yeah. yeah. He just connected so beautifully. Mm. He just puts the one thing, even if he can be a bit rash and he can, you know, maybe go a little bit too far with some of his tackles and jump in a little bit too much. The one thing is he leads that team, especially when there's no Coleman and stuff in it. Myra might be the captain and Myra might be the cool head in the middle of the park. But leadership wise and in terms of pulling that team forward, giving them that extra little bit of energy when they don't have it. McLean will get the ball, he will go on a run, he will make a big challenge, he'll score the goal. And he gives you absolutely everything. And I think the rest of the players in the team just follow him. They go, right, well, James is here, James is going to pull one out for us, he's going to get us a vital corner or a throw in, or he's going to win the ball back for us high up the pitch and he's going to get us a chance. But then there's times where he'll go and he'll kick the ball out of play trying to win a tackle. Just to get a roar out of the crowd, rather than actually trying to win the ball, get position and keep it. Well, I don't but even that think that annoys me. I don't even think he does that purposely. I think that's uh, more. I definitely does. I think that's more of a just he just going into absolutely. Because he gave you a jersey. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think he's just going into like basically absolutely batter someone and get the ball at the oh, same I time. I think you're right. I think it's a long time since we've had players that are really that passionate. Do you know? Yeah, really yeah. Like, like, and I, I'm, not, I'm not faulting the claim whatsoever. Like. You know, most people know I like him. I just think that yeah. there's some things that he could yeah. he could maybe Tidy change. Up. It kind of reminds me of Rooney when he was younger, when he was losing. Yeah. Just silly th- little things. He I reminds me of Roy Keane in a big game. Yeah, because that's what I said. <laughs> the, the, yeah. the, yeah. the one thing that kind of, in my mind, and now you guys might think differently, but in my mind, because we struggled at the start, but the one thing that kind of got us back into life was that smash he did in Ramsey, I think. Yeah. In the first, in the was first. That early on, though. Yeah, it was quite early yeah, in the game. We needed, well, we needed that. I got, I got, I got, yeah. I got flashbacks to Keane on Overmars back in. Yeah, back that was a bit worse. Just, just, <laughs> just, 
but it was, it was, it was, yeah, obviously, you know, you can't compare the two tackles, but it was just similar that it was yeah, the no, I get first you. big big crunch come in just yeah. to get a bit of life in the game because we were chasing shadows at that rate. But yeah, and then you have the other side of him, which is at the end where he you know, just loses the head. You know, well, yeah, we, that's what I mean. Like yeah. the shoulder badge. Yeah, he that was just, stupid. He's going yeah. nowhere. Yeah. 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 And he, put, he puts us under so much pressure. Means I think he could just change. And he's Don't, a bit older now as well, so yeah, he should be. He's 27. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, 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 like, if you take me wrong here, I, I do like the player. Mm-hmm. Like, I love no, him in Ireland, sure. Like, mm-hmm. absolutely like, love all of them. But I just think there's a couple of little things that we could change. That's all. I'm Tweaks. All right. It's just, before he's asked, that, give me shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll move on to uh, the, their chances. Obviously, uh, Darren Randolph, who uh, Steve loves to stick to and doesn't like to. No, nah, I'll hold my hands up to the fact Just that. Justify it. Hold, yeah, hold my hands up to the fact Randolph was outstanding against Wales. It's the best game he's had for us in a long time. I actually Since the Euros. When it, yeah, when he was first kind of came into the squad and everything like that, I actually called for him to come in because it was Shea Given, it was David Ford, and it was like, we need a younger keeper, he's playing games and everything like that. Shea And yeah, in the last David kind of... David Ford didn't do anything wrong either, you know. He, look, I'm a Portsmouth fan, I love David Ford. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He kept so many clean sheets <laughs> yeah, for us winning the league last Randolph year. Down, yeah. But Randolph came in, he gave us new blood, he was younger. Um, and then he did, because stuff wasn't going right for him at West Ham, at club level either, he went off the boil, he started to make a couple of mistakes for us, he started to drop more crosses. He even dropped one or two on Monday, but he recovered yeah, them well. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. the top um, was just the one that kind of... The one thing you can't knock him for, and I will continuously knock him for um, yeah, not post. saving shots at his near post, mm. because it's something the keeper should do, and he Shows concedes you. too many mm-hmm. of them. But when, you, when someone hits a shot at him, or a point blank kind of shot that he has to save with his reflexes, he's absolutely outstanding mm. because he does have great reflexes and he is a great shot stopper. He's an athlete, isn't he? Yeah, there's a reason he's in the championship as a goalkeeper and it's because there is little deficiencies in his game and no goalkeeper we have is perfect. Yeah. But he did prove on Monday why he has been number one throughout the campaign yeah. because he can come up with them vital moments that you do need in a game like that to just keep you in it. Well, well, I was say, he's never let us down. No. Yeah, he, he makes mistakes, mistakes against but that's but all. He's never, he's never, yeah. Yeah, besides that Uruguay game, which was a friendly, he's never done anything wrong. Mm. For us. He has a steely assurance as well to myself. I always think he looks calm and composed at the best of yeah. times. And, you know, he, swagger, he, he does have that yeah, bit yeah. of swagger. Even like when the simple things, the ball goes out and he's like, no, 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 ball boy, don't give me that. I'm just going to take it down and throw it out. And, you know, mm. He yeah. just adds, he, he calm seems he gives that nice bit of assurance yeah. around. Because yeah. even at the end... He seems like a nice guy. Isn't he? Oh, he's a grand lad. He's, he's, nice he's a good lad to have a point. He's a nice gentleman. Of course they are. He's a nice chat too, actually. Good man. What were you going to say, Josh? <laughs> I'm lost now. <laughs> Starstruck. Well, we star 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 star. I was just talking about how much of a nice guy you are. <laughs> the, save, uh, the save from Rabs and Carney was class. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That kept us in the game. I mean, you can't underestimate that. And then the players build from that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they gain confidence from the, from the keeper. Mm. Speaking of which, Shane... I was Duffy. about to say we need to stop beating around the bush here because the new Richard the because the new Richard Dawn just the was on the scene. Now, have you have you seen a more heroic uh, piece of defence? Is probably Richie Dawn against. I was about to Russia. say it's Richard Dawn in Moscow. Mm. Was exactly what it was. Track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's was, was still a danger in that track, isn't there? Yeah, it was classic. It was classic. He was he was just throwing himself in front of everything. Headers, crosses into the box. They were hitting shots and he was throwing himself well, in front of them. Well, he was slide tackling over. He blocked a, t- a tackle. Was it was like Ramsey or someone. He yeah. took a shot. Yeah, he, and he, put, he went down for a corner. He was taking his own players at the end. He was ta- The ball, the keeper, everybody was getting knocked there in that box at the end. It was he brilliant nearly, to watch. He nearly he's scored as well. He's such a fucking <laughs> beast, <laughs> yeah. isn't he? Yes. Yeah, I love like, him when he's concentrating, though. Like When he's yeah. like fully alert... He's brilliant, and, it was, and, and and like what we were saying about if they want to pump long, but we're going to pump oh, long balls with Ashley Williams. Yeah. he's going to take that all day. Mm. Duffy even more so the size of him. <laughs> yeah, he's about uh, twice he's, the size of him. Like. He's six. He's what six four, nearly six five, and he's got a great leap on him as well. I think so he's even more. He's, He's getting, he's, nice he's getting so, he's getting <laughs> so high for those headers mm. that just, even if it is Vokes or Robson Canu, he's actually taking a step and he's just stepping in. He'd there rather everything. that header than control the ball and pass it. Yeah. He loves the meat and drink. Yeah, he's, he's, he's an old-fashioned type. Exactly. Yeah, he is. He's very old skill in the way he plays and I think... Yeah, at club, he is very Richard Dunn-esque though, isn't he? he is, yeah, actually, there is yeah. a little bit of commercial. Yeah. Well, obviously bigger, but... At club yeah. level, I think he's he gets... A, but Richie Dunn, sorry to cut you yeah. off, Richie Dunn was obviously a menace in the opposition spot, just mm. like he is. Yeah. Sorry, but go on. Um, at club level, I think he does 
he does have a limit to what he can do because of how club football is and how technical a lot of the teams at the top are. Yeah. And he's not the most technical player, as we all know that. He's not the best passer of the ball. But neither, is, awesome. but neither is James McLean. You know, but these players, when you put them... Miroslav Klaus is, was the prime example for the last 15 years. Mm. He wasn't great at club level, but you put him in an international shirt in that different mm. style of football, and he couldn't miss. Right, so look, at not, right all the same. Yeah. look at David. Look at David. There you go. Lewandowski only broke Real his uh, World Cup goal scoring yeah. record what, this campaign. Who? Lewandowski only broke it, David Healy's goal scoring record for qualifying this campaign. Like. Poland, yeah. Well, they're, yeah. they're not Robbie Keane's anyway. So. He's actually mm-hmm. from German descent, he's not Polish though. Yeah. Who, um, Lewandowski. Lewandowski. Yeah. Yeah. Nice it was nice for them <laughs> to steal nice for them to steal one back when Klaus and Podolski went the other way. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, sure, yeah. <laughs> look, since we're on the topic of, of like sacrifice, we get on to David Moyle, obviously sacrificed himself for a yellow. Do you think with that happening now, Moyle obviously due to miss the next game, it's just about a month away. James McCarthy McCarthy's back in back in full training. If he gets a couple of games for Everton, and Koeman said he's in his plans, I know there's been the whole controversy, but if, if McCarthy can get a couple of games in, he'd be vital to have in a qualifier. He's a big game player. Yeah. And anytime we've only won any big games, he's been in there. And he's been there by himself as well. Yeah. He hasn't. When we've won the Italy in the Euros is the biggest mm. example of it. Glenn Whelan stepped out. James McCarthy sat there by himself. McCarthy, when he's there by himself, he can be the deepest player. He can almost play as like a third central defender at times. Yeah, in, the, well, he just covers everything in how deep he sits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He steps back in and the centre has move out. Yeah, it's like yeah. nearly five at the back. He's a great player. Well, if one of the midfield, if one of the if full backs bomb on, he covers him. Yeah, as yeah. Well, so. Roy Kane loves uh, McCarthy as well. So yeah. I think he's just, he'd be in his ear all the time, you know. So, 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 so if it goes to show that a player like Roy Kane, like, you know, he demands the best, so he obviously exactly. thinks. He is one of the best. And I've, I've said it from watching Everton on the regular. He is probably our best midfielder. Mm. He's a fantastic he's fanta- player. When he's fit. He's when he's playing. But he needs to be, you know. Mm. Back, he, back he, in his Wigan days, I was desperate for us to sign him. Like, you know, Kenny was very, we were strongly linked to him before he moved on to Martinez to, to Everton. He's kind of suffered a little bit with injuries, but yeah, no, fantastic player. Fits. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying, trying to be easy on the guy you here. Know we're looking at him. That must have been really yeah. keen, aren't they? Maybe, maybe, but he, he fits. He fits. He fits perfectly into that system again because we're going to go with the same system in the playoffs, and he just just swaps in. Yeah, but if he was, if he was, it would be a straight swap for Moyle. Yeah, and he's a better player. Do you know what I mean? As good as David Moyle was, I, I, I can't David Moyle was brilliant. I thought last few games, and he was oh, absolutely, absolutely yeah. Yeah, and, and, and he, he will be a big to, miss, and he deserves to come back in. He's yeah. in the form. David Moyle has informed his career. Mm. David Moyle has never been at a better level than he is now. Yeah, even no. for Hull, he should be playing. Nominated, so. nominated for mm-hmm. Championship Player of the Month. He's Hull's Player of the Month. He was named as today. He's got a couple of goals in the last month. Or Hull three assists in the last mm-hmm. month. He's he is the Titan guys for Hull. Yeah, he looks ultra. He's captain in Hull. Mm-hmm. He's captain in Ireland. He's now. Like, look mm-hmm. at him putting up all those pictures on social media. He's just like that. Yeah. And it's <laughs> well, you look at him on YouTube all as he well. Needs like he's just a suspension now. You see, but that's what happens. But as I say, coming in with them. Um, McCarthy, I think, would be perfect. The ideal situation, and then you're pushed. The two of them are pushing each other then for the second leg when Moyler's back, or you possibly play both and you put Moyler further forward and you leave McCarthy and you put Moyler basically where Harry Arthur was, mm. um, and you play a little bit more defensively. First so time, obviously, it depends on the, the first. The leg. first leg will depend the, the really the tactics for the it's second. Four yeah. fighting for that position. Who are those four lads fighting for those positions? Well, Glenn Whelan will be biting at their heels to get back in. I thought he actually did quite well. I got a bit pissed off in the in the pub. I was telling the lads earlier on, everyone moaning the size around the pub when he came on for Harry Arthur. I thought it was terrible. Yeah, it was the same in the living room. He always does a really good job for his country and he's good at what he does. He sat there and soaked it up just as much as Duffy did further back. So he'll be there. I thought he he, he did his job for Woodbury and that is pretty much what he was put in to do. Yeah. Just kind of, you know, Perfect game for him. Really. A Sorry. reducer, yeah, exactly. Sorry. But yeah. he'll be in there. McCarthy will be back, please God. Uh, you'll have Jeff. Myler after this one suspension. Jeff Hendrick. I prefer him as a Harry Arthur's five. Harry Arthur's five. Connor yeah. Horan's still playing well for Billy. He's not going to be picked in the playoffs, I don't think. But I don't still, think we've ever had a luxury of all those decent around, players like, in yeah, that yeah. position. You know? And, and they're, all, they're all playing at a decent level. And exactly. good form yeah. as well. This, yeah. yeah, they actually yeah. are all in good form. Yeah. Hendrick's yeah. gone goals. Yeah, don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I do just, I kind of, with Glenn Whelan, a lot of people give him a lot of stick and have always given him a lot of stick. Mm. And I do, 
personally think it is the end of it for him with Ireland now after this campaign. Yeah. And that's yeah. not even down to himself as much as we've just named four central exactly. midfielders who can yeah. all play in that position, who are all younger than mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. And when he came on against Wales on Monday, a lot, of, as you say, a lot of people uh, now, when we're sitting that deep, Mm. And he doesn't have to use pace, and he can just use his brain exactly. and his football mind. He is the ideal player to come on to close a game out. <clears throat> Absolutely so ideal. Yeah. Because he went, he played on the right, he let Woodburn stay outside, but as soon as Woodburn came in, Whelan was there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Woodburn, at 17 years old, wants nothing to do with Glenn Whelan. Exactly, yeah. correct. He That's might be a really precocious, yeah. yeah, he might be a really precocious talent, Woodburn, but when you've got an old wily veteran midfielder <laughs> who just wants to kick you exactly. from one end of the pitch yeah. to the other, it, it was, he wants none of that. <laughs> it was like a couple of friends of mine um, were asking, oh, how did Woodburn get on? And he's like, Good player, but he's the wrong, wrong type of game from there. It's, it's a bit early for him. Like they, they were all like relying on him to be the savior and all this. Yeah, with Bale out, get in was, yeah. like, they'd nearly yeah. have been better on bring or better off bringing on Brooks from Sheffield United, like a fella who hasn't actually played for Wales yet. Bring him on; he's scoring goals for fun in the championship, yeah, and right. he's actually playing games. And he's playing against Glenn Whelan. He's yeah, playing against that's, these lads. Exactly. Woodburn's playing against under 23s players most weeks and getting into the Liverpool team the odd time. For the last 10 minutes. Chris yeah. is a golf show. Anyway, um, <laughs> I really hope you get sacked because Kenny Jacket is the fa- or one of the favourites to take over and I don't want him to be Porsche manager anymore. It's all worked out. Yeah. Well, without the fans leave some comments and let us know your thoughts on what we've discussed here. And uh, also let us know who you would like to get in the playoffs. Thank you very much for watching Italy. Irish Football Fan TV. <laughs> Thanks very much for coming on, guys. No Thanks, lads. Don't Thank forget you. to like, subscribe, and share.